What up guys, Cole here, and in this video, I talk about our VSL framework. So VSL stands for Video Sales Letter, and for us, we have a, two companies together pacing about 25 million a year. Both of the acquisition systems of those companies are through video sales letter funnels. So I talk about the framework for this, I talk about the difference between direct leads indirect leads. We also talk about the six ways to start a sales message. So we're going to code over to the next video and get this training going. So the question is, do you have a formula for a VSL? Now, for those who don't know what a VSL is, a VSL means a video sales letter. So really the same thing is a traditional sales letter that's been around for, you know, hundreds of years at this point, but over video, which, you know, one of the first people to uh, pioneer that, that I would recommend learning from is John Benson, the VSL, not the actual sales letter, but the video sales letter. Now, um, in terms of a formula, it really depends. You know, it'd be nice if there was a one size fits all, for, uh, one size fits all formula for every single offer out there that you could just kind of plug and play like your perfect webinar script um, and it would work. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So uh, what I'd really recommend doing is reading this book called Great Leads and it identifies the six most predominant ways to start a sales message. And in particular, I find that between those six ways, there's certain lead types that are more direct and certain lead types that are more indirect. So indirect, or let's start with direct, is a little bit easier. So direct means in the lead, which means in the first 30 seconds of the video sales letter in this case, if it was written, it would be in the first couple of lines, they know it's an offer, right? They know you're trying to sell them something. Indirect means you're maybe starting with a, a story, a secret, a proclamation, you're starting with some value. And then what's happening is you're pivoting somewhere in the uh, sales message to the call to action. So it might start off with the story, but then through you telling the story, it kind of pivots to you selling something, right? So that's an indirect lead. Now, um, the reason that is important to understand is whether you're going more direct or more indirect, that's gonna highly predicate the, the way you're gonna make your VSL and to be candid, um, it's very different. If you're very, very direct, it's very different from very, very indirect. But in general, once you decide that, here's how VSLs look. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna start with a pattern interrupt, okay? So a pattern interrupt is exactly what it sounds like. It breaks the prospect's pattern. Like, so when we walk through life, we're running, you know, our brain is always trying to conserve energy and in doing so, it kind of creates scripts for us to run through. Like that's why everybody, you know, a lot of people, whether they consciously have a morning routine or not, they kind of have a morning routine, right? That's a script your brain is running. At the same time, when you go to work, your brain goes into the working script, right? When you're scrolling on social media, you're kind of in a pattern of the scroll, right? You're in the scrolling script. Easy way to think about it. I'm not a, you know, NLP genius over here, but I'm kind of simplifying it. So uh, the pattern interrupt, as it sounds, breaks the pattern, it breaks the script. Now there's a couple of ways to do that. The thinking behind it is essentially you want to communicate an idea that's either new, uh, that's valuable, okay, or that it implies danger. Really, if you look at value versus danger, if you think about like a primitive brain, right? So like a caveman, you have, um, you know, if a caveman's walking through the forest and a stick breaks behind him, that could mean danger, right? That could mean, you know, a tiger that's trying to eat him, right? This is thousands of years ago, obviously, but this stuff actually applies. So that's a, a, a new, that's a novel thing that's happening and it's, a, it's implying danger or the novel thing that could be happening could be implying value, okay? Maybe it's food that he can eat and bring home. Maybe it's, um, you know, a, a woman that he could mate with, I don't know. You know, something that could give him status. It could be a million different things. So I would think about it as new, unique, useful, specific, it implies danger, it implies consequences, or it implies value, right? Those are kind of the overarching things. I'll add a little bonus in here for pattern interrupts. I would even say, um, if it even implies confusion, that could be good, okay? So like, for instance, I mentioned John Benson. I mean, that's a great guy to learn this stuff from, but you know, one of his sales messages starts off with, hey, my name's John, and this is my lucky jacket. Now, this is a weight loss promo, but it's, Hey, my name's John, this is my lucky jacket. And then in this video, and then he goes into the next part, which we're gonna cover in a second, but hey, you know, this is my lucky jacket, right? It's like, what? I, I did one the other day where I have a, uh, you know, I'm selling a sales training course, right? So I'm selling that, but 
I start the ad with a coin really close to the camera. That's like, look at this sexy little hot thing right here. And it's like a Bitcoin. And I'm like, most people think that, and then I go into my sales message. Now I tie the pattern interrupt overarching or to, into the overarching sales message. So that's really important. You can't just, if it is going to confuse somebody, you can't just do something random. You got to do something that is paid off in the sales message. So that's step one. Step two is really dropping the hook, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a little bit of the hook and promise. Okay. It's, it's, it can be, um, a fluid thing here. The hook is really calling out to the audience or calling out to a specific group of people looking to do a specific thing or experiencing a specific circumstance or specific problem. So you could either step, you know, there's three ways to do a hook, at least the way I'm thinking about it. Okay. Um, you can call to the audience, you can call to the problem they're experiencing or their circumstances, or you can call to their desires, right? So you could say, um, you know, this would just be a really basic example for realtors who are looking to get more high-end listing appointments at 400 to $600,000 a month for their listing teams. Listen up, right? In, in my example, at least that might not be the actual definition of a hook for like most copywriters in the way I'm teaching this formula. That's, that's what I call my hook. Now my promise is after I uh, address the circumstance, the problem, the desire, what have you, the promise is really almost think of a, is like the headline. Okay. And that's ultimately what they're going to get by consuming the marketing message. Okay. What they're going to get the benefit they're going to receive, not from the product, but from, from consuming the marketing message. Really, really important distinction, not from the product, from consuming the marketing message. Now, if you're doing an offer lead or a very direct lead, you know, your, your promise is going to be basic. I mean, your, your big promise is like, is the product, right? Is what you could do for the clients, the benefits, but in a traditional, more indirect lead, promise based lead, secret lead, proclamation lead, that type of stuff, which is a lot of sales copy. It's really like, if you're telling a story, it's the ben it's communicating really, or implying the benefit of them consuming the story or reading the rest of the sales message. Okay. Again, not the product. So, uh, there's multitude of different examples like this, but, um, that's the second step. Okay. I could give examples for days. The third step is usually when you get the big promise. I mean, what that promise is, is a claim. Okay. It's a claim. Now, by the way, I mean, we're like, you know, I'm 10 minutes into this explanation or whatever. And, uh, this is maybe the first 20 seconds of your sales message. Right? <laughs> so you got to realize like the reason I'm spending so much time on this part is because it's the most important part. It's, it's the lead. That's why if you ever get copy coaching, they just review the lead most of the time, because that's, what's going to, uh, mean the majority of the results. If a copywriter tries to beat your control, they're usually just going to try to test the lead. Or, and a lot of times, like I even know a guy who's a really, really uh, well-known copywriter and, um, very, very successful. And usually with him, he just tries to, uh, change the first, like one to two lines. That's it. One to two lines. And he'll beat the control and he'll get royalties because of that. It's a pretty cool game. So anyways, to digress, after we make the big promise, the big claim, we need to back it up. Now, every claim needs to be backed up with two to three different proof points. So there's so many different types of proof. There's third party credibility. There's living proof. There's your client results. There's uh, celebrity endorsements. There's all sorts of stuff. Okay. So all sorts of different types of proof. Uh, we want to use a combination. There's reason why proof, or like, I call that like table side logic. There's analogies, there's metaphors, there's quotes. Um, you want to use a combination of all of them to prove what you just said to be true. Okay. Prove what you just said to be true. It's really, really important. You could show, you could just demonstrate, right? Show, not tell. It's another form of proof. And then after that, what you want to do. So to recap, we got pattern interrupt. We got big promise. We got big proof. The next step is what I, we want to salt the lead. Okay. So what's salting the lead? Basically we're about to reveal, uh, you know, the new opera, new opportunity or, or whatever that they're going to read in the sales message. Right? So for the next kind of like 90 seconds, we really want to tease the benefits of what we're going to share. Right? So like think of the big promise was like what you're going to learn from this. And then now salting the lead is like teasing out the benefits of whatever they were going to learn. Does that make sense? So it's like, 
we, we want to tease the benefits. A good way to do this is you can like say, and you know, the best thing about this opportunity is you can do it without this, without this, without this, like the things they hate, their objections. And another way you could tease it is you can tell them what it's not, right? You can say, and it's not this, it's not this, it's not this, it's not this, right? It builds curiosity of like, the, like, what is this thing? Like, what is the, the, the mechanism or the new opportunity or whatever the IP is here? And then at the same time, when we're talking about the benefits and what it is, we want to talk about it. And I got this from Kyle Milligan. He was a copywriter for Agora in a way that's new, in a way that feels big, it's fast that it's the only, that anybody can do it, and then it's easy and predictable, okay? So we wanna, and you're not gonna hit all of those. Maybe you can, but you're probably not gonna hit all of those, but if you get a couple of those, that's huge, okay? So we get that. And then what you do is then you can finally start to explain the opportunity, and the way I like to explain the opportunity, so now we're going to a different part, right? We sold the lead. Now we're gonna go into the explanation. What I like to do, is an easy way to really suck them in. Because the biggest thing is we want to get them to like stay and watch the video. Uh, after we sold the lead, sold the lead, now what's really going to hook them is when we pivot to a story, okay? And what we want to do when we pivot to the story is we want to be able to deliver what's called the preeminent reason why, okay? The preeminent reason why is the reason in their own best interests for them to consume the story of the sales message. So like, this is the issue with like, you know, most people, they, they hate these marketing videos with like, oh my God, it's the richest story, all this love. And at the end of the day, it's because like, there's no value given through the story. It's just like, look how great I am. I'm on Forbes, I'm on this, I'm on this, I'm on this. You know, I'm awesome. Like, it's just like, ugh, like people are so tired of that. It can work, but people are very tired of that. On the contrary, if you give the preeminent reason why, what you're doing is you're telling them the benefit of them consuming the story before they consume the story, right? You're getting buy-in and permission to let them, or for them to hear your story, right? And you're telling them why knowing the story is important, opposed to it just seeming like you're not, now you're just pivoting to talking about yourself. That is so big. So I'm a really big believer in that. And then the next part is you tell your story, then the story will reveal an epiphany that is the opportunity, how you stumbled and discovered upon the opportunity or how a client did. And then after that, you give content on how to execute the opportunity, right? It's only three steps, right? Three steps to build an Amazon business, three steps to do this, crypto, whatever it is. And then you CTA, call to action, right? So, I, you know, the story and the content, yeah, there's a method to the madness of that. Like if anybody wants to, know more about this stuff. They could work with us as a private client. There'll probably be a link below. You can book a call or DM me on Facebook or something. Um, comment below saying you want more information, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll send it to you. But yeah, I mean, you do story and then the story is going to go into content to CTA. So there's a lot of nuances within all that stuff, but the most important part is the lead. So for the guy who asked that question, hopefully.